Good day and welcome. Today, we're continuing our discussion on levers with a focus on the intriguing world of third-class levers. We'll start by examining the single third-class lever to understand why it never provides mechanical advantage. From there, we'll explore linked third-class levers with fascinating real-world examples, including the office light-duty stapler and a pair of tweezers, both of which have a mechanical advantage of less than one. Join us as we delve into these everyday tools and uncover the principles behind their unique mechanics. And here's the fun part, stick around until the end for some brain-teasing questions to test your skills. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material. It's a fantastic way to boost your confidence for those upcoming tests and exams. Today's lesson is part of our exciting series on levers. For more informative videos on levers, please check out the links in the description for more details. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our weekly uploads. Alright, let's get started on this journey together and discover how second-class levers can make work easier. So, let's go! In our last discussions, we saw that first-class levers have the fulcrum position between the effort and load. This allows them to change the direction of the applied force. As the effort presses down, the load moves up. In a second-class lever, the load is positioned between the fulcrum and the effort. In a second-class lever, the input and output move in the same direction. Today, we are focusing on third-class levers. With third-class levers, the input or effort is positioned between the fulcrum and the load. This arrangement can be represented as FEL or LEF, where F stands for fulcrum, the pivot point. L stands for load, the weight or resistance being moved and E stands for effort which is the force you apply. In a third class lever, the effort forces both the input and the output to move in the same direction. When you apply force to the effort arm, the load moves in the same direction, but the load arm moves a greater distance than the effort arm. Mechanical advantage, MA, in third-class levers is always less than one. This means that the force applied to the effort must be greater than the force exerted on the load. Although this might seem inefficient, third-class levers are beneficial in situations where you need to increase the speed or distance of the load movement. In third-class levers, the mechanical advantage, MA, is always less than one because the effort arm is shorter than the load arm. This means that the point where the effort is applied is closer to the fulcrum than the load. As a result, more force is needed to move the load, but the load moves a greater distance. A single third-class lever is a single rigid structure used to move an object. It is identified by the effort being applied in the center. The fulcrum is at one end and the load is on the opposite end. Examples of single third-class levers include a bicep curl. The use of a broom, a rake or a shovel represents single third-class levers. In a single third-class lever, such as a bodybuilder performing bicep curls, the elbow acts as the fulcrum, the bicep muscle applies the effort in the middle of the forearm and the weight in the hand is the load. The bicep muscle exerts force on the forearm which is positioned between the elbow, the fulcrum, and the weight in the hand, the load. Both the effort and the load move in the same direction. When the bodybuilder curls the weight, both the effort arm, the forearm, and the load move upwards. The load moves a greater distance compared to the effort. This means that the hand, holding the weight, moves further than the point where the bicep muscle exerts force on the forearm. This type of lever requires a significant amount of effort to move the load because the effort arm is shorter than the load arm. This results in no mechanical advantage. 
MA is less than 1. When a person uses a broom to sweep, the broom itself functions as a third-class lever. In this setup, the hand at the top of the broom acts as the fulcrum. This hand serves as the pivot point around which the broom moves. The hand positioned lower down the broom applies the effort. This hand exerts a force to move the broom back and forth, enabling the sweeping action. The leaves or debris being swept constitute the load. As the broom moves across the floor, the effort applied by the lower hand is transferred through the broom to move the load, the leaves or debris, towards the desired location. The effort arm is the distance from the hand applying the effort, lower hand, to the fulcrum, hand at the top of the broom. The load arm is the distance from the load, the leaves or debris being swept, to the fulcrum, hand at the top of the broom. In a third-class lever like the broom, the effort arm is typically shorter than the load arm. This results in a mechanical advantage of less than one. The shovel, when used to lift dirt, acts as a third-class lever with the hand near the middle of the handle applying the effort, the hand at the end serving as the fulcrum, and the load being the dirt in the shovel. Similarly, a fishing rod functions as a third-class lever where the hand holding the rod acts as the fulcrum, the hand casting the line provides the effort, and the fish on the line represents the load. A garden rake, used for gathering leaves, also demonstrates a third-class lever, with the hand at the top of the handle as the fulcrum, the hand near the middle providing the effort, and the load being the leaves being moved. Linked third-class levers are two paired structures used to move an object. They are identified by the effort being applied in the center, with the fulcrum at one end and the load at the opposite end. Linked third-class levers are not strong. As we have already seen, the effort arm is shorter than the load arm. The longer distance of the load to the fulcrum means more effort is needed to do the work. Again, no mechanical advantage is possible, and the mechanical advantage, MA, is less than 1. Despite this, these levers are useful for gripping or pinching objects, as a pair of tongs does, for example. Let us look at some examples of this type of lever. The light-duty office stapler is a linked third-class lever. The point where the office light duty stapler is fixed to the structure is at one end of the linkage, serving as the fulcrum. The distance between the load, the paper being stapled, and the fulcrum is the greatest in this setup. The load arm is greater than the effort arm. No mechanical advantage is possible when you use this office tool, which means that the force applied by your hand must be greater than the force exerted on the load. This is expressed by saying that the mechanical advantage is less than 1. This setup requires more effort to push the staple through the paper, but it allows for precise control of the stapling action. A pair of tweezers consists of two parts joined at the back, creating a pivot point known as the fulcrum. The load that needs to be gripped is positioned at the farthest point from this fulcrum, at the tips of the tweezers. To use the tweezers effectively, more force must be applied by squeezing the arms together. This is because the effort arm, the distance from where you apply the force to the fulcrum, is shorter than the load arm, the distance from the fulcrum to the tips gripping the load. As a result, no mechanical advantage is possible with tweezers, meaning the force exerted by your fingers must be greater than the force exerted on the load. Mechanical advantage is less than 1. Despite this, tweezers are highly useful for tasks requiring precision and control, such as picking up small objects or plucking hairs. You can use the mnemonic flea or FLE to easily remember the different types of levers. In the word flea or FLE, the letter F stands for the fulcrum, L is for load and E is for effort. If the fulcrum is in the middle, it is a first-class lever. If the load is in the middle, it is a second-class lever. If the effort is in the middle, it is a third-class lever. This mnemonic, 
FLE helped simplify the understanding and identification of the different classes of levers. We have come to the end for today. But before we go, please attempt the following questions before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. This is an important section that consolidates what you have learned. In the next video, we will be calculating mechanical advantage in the different types of levers we have discussed. So, let us meet next time as we delve deeper into this topic. Be sure to check out the link in the description for more videos. Also, please do not forget to subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching, and keep well.